With a lot of fan excitement heading into the New Orleans Saints 2022 NFL season, which Saints players are the ones most likely to bring the fireworks this season? We got all of that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into another episode of Locked On Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much, as always, for making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that we're free and available on all of your favorite podcast apps and on YouTube as well. And I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter. You can find me over at USA Today Saints Wire Tuesdays on Locked On NFL and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked On Saints. Today's episode of Locked On Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. They've got more odds, lines, and props than ever before, so go and check them out over at Bet Online, where the game starts. Happy 4th of July to you. Didn't want to take the day off today, but took a little bit of time to get today's episode out. A little bit lazy this morning, uh, taking my time. But I wanted to uh, come into today with a little bit of the, the festive, a little bit of the holiday spirit here, and talk a little bit about the New Orleans Saints that are sure to bring the fireworks in 2022. Now, if you're from New Orleans like I am, you say popping fireworks, popping firecrackers, all that. You might say lighting, whatever it is. So if you hear me say something like popping fireworks, you know what that means. It's just setting them off, right? Doing, doing the thing you're supposed to do with the fireworks. So we're going to go through the offensive tandem that's sure to bring the most excitement, the defensive tandem that's sure to bring the most fireworks, and then look at how some of the key returns for the New Orleans Saints are sure to bring fireworks as well, particularly at the end of games. So I want to start off here with the offensive duo, Jameis Winston and Chris Olave, because in 2022, that duo, that tandem, is sure to be a big play factory and therefore bring the fireworks all day long throughout the season. So let's just talk a little bit about the compatibility here or break down the compatibility here between Jameis Winston and Chris Olave, just looking basically at 2021 with one exception. Jameis Winston amongst NFL passers in 2021 with 100 or more passes, right? That's a total of 40 or excuse me, 100 or more uh, dropbacks. That's a, a total of 44 quarterbacks. He was second in the NFL in pro football focuses ranking of big time throws. That means accurate passes either downfield or in tight windows. He was at a 7.1% there or 7.1 rating there. Number one in the NFL was Kyler Murray at 8.1%. So uh, Jameis Winston, for all that's being made of him averaging 165 or so passing yards per game during his seven starts, not enough is being made about when he was given the opportunity to take those risks, to go downfield, to open up the field a little bit, that he was successful there. It goes further. He had the number five average depth of target in 2021. So the number of you know, the average of 160 whatever yards didn't have a lot to do with him staying contained. It just had a lot to do with the offense not passing the ball a ton. Again, 30th in the NFL in passing attempts in 2021. Now, not all of that was Jameis Winston, right? There were four different quarterbacks that started, but you could see where the New Orleans Saints were headed early on in the season. Now, his average depth of target last year was 9.5 yards per target, only four quarterbacks above that. Uh, and they were the only four quarterbacks to go 10 or more yards. He also had the second longest time to throw with only 17 scrambles, with the number one in terms of scrambles being like Josh Allen with 51, 50 plus, Lamar Jackson with 50 in the little bit of time that he played. So what you can see there is that it wasn't just him buying time. It's that when he had even an already injured but mostly healthy offensive line in front of him, he got time. In fact, the most time to throw in his career. And speaking of that, he also had a 102.8 passer rating, which was also a career high, and the sixth lowest percentage of pressure turned into sacks. So what does all of that mean? That means that Jameis Winston was somebody that produced last year, again, 14 touchdowns to three interceptions. I think I said 13 interceptions in a show the other day, three interceptions, um, and was given time to do to, to produce even behind the hurt offensive line. Remember, Eric McCoy was out for a little while of that. Teron Armstead was out for a little while of that. So these are things that should help you understand how the Saints could potentially produce on the offensive line without Teron Armstead. You're seeing some of the results here of an offensive line that missed two key pieces at the beginning of the season. 
And when given the opportunity to throw, he did so at the second best rate in the NFL. And these aren't just any old quarterbacks. These are all quarterbacks with over 100 dropbacks. These are quarterbacks that produced and played in 2021. And then when you also consider that the average depth of target there was the highest below, right? Uh, the highest, in, or, or excuse me, was one of the highest in the NFL. It was top five, but it was the highest without going over 10 yards. You also see that he was able to do what he did last year in a New Orleans Saints offense when still given the opportunity to go downfield, he was able to take advantage of that. Okay. Now you think about all of that and then add the framework of Chris Olave. Chris Olave in 2021 amongst all wide receivers in college football uh, that had at least 80 targets. So not just the Big Ten, not just the Power Five, all of football that had over 80 targets, which are over 100 receivers. Olave had 101 targets. He was tied for second with most touchdown receptions at 13, number one being Jordan Addison, Ad- Addison excuse me, formerly of the Pittsburgh uh, Panthers, now headed to USC. He was tied for fourth most when it came to touchdown catches of 20 plus yards with seven, the highest being 10. He was, uh, he had 35.4 yards per reception on targets over 20 yards. So he didn't just have a bunch of 20 yard receptions, 21 yard receptions. When he was targeted for 20 plus yards, he put up an average of 35 yards per catch, 111.1 passer rating when targeted all told. And only has a 4.9% career drop percentage with 25% of his targets throughout his career coming 20 yards or more downfield. That's the one exception that I was talking about. So what did we just learn? We learned that Jameis Winston can still produce downfield. We learned that Jameis Winston can produce big time throws. We learned that Jameis Winston should still have time behind even the 2022 version of the New Orleans Saints offensive line, which we're not entirely sure what that's going to look like. Is it the usual offensive line, but with uh, Trevor Penning starting at left tackle instead of Teron Armstead, still with Andrus Pete at left guard, Eric McCoy at center, Cesar Ruiz at right guard, and Ryan Ramchek at right tackle? Is Andrus Pete ready to go at the beginning of the season? Is James Hurst in that spot, or does James Hurst challenge for right guard? If he doesn't get left tackle, does he end up winning left tackle? Right? Like there's enough there for you to ask questions about the offensive line. But based upon what we saw last year with Jameis Winston under center, The Saints were still able to give him the time that he needed. And when he went downfield, he was able to produce. And now he has a big time producer downfield at uh, his disposal. Now, Deontay Hardy turned into that, uh, you know, in in his role last season. But Chris Olave is a very polished NFL ready version coming in to add to that dynamic. I think you're still going to see Deontay Hardy. I did an episode on him uh, this past week about how he's probably the Saints' secret weapon going into 2022. He's not a secret to us. He's not a secret to you as a Saints fan, but he is a secret behind Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and Chris Olave where defenses are going to be paying attention. So you consider what Jameis Winston was able to do behind that offensive line with the time that he was given when he went downfield with the receiving core that he had last year. And then now you consider the fact that he'll have Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, and then Chris Olave, who feels like the absolute perfect ingredient to add to Jameis Winston. They're going to put up the fireworks in 2022. Coming up next, we're going to look at the defensive side. What's a defensive tandem that's going to put up some fireworks in 2022? Well, it sounds like a, uh, it's not really a tandem. It's a group and they sound a little bit like a law firm when you put all their names together. So we'll go through that and we'll talk a little bit about the Matthew May and Gardner Johnson and Associates uh, as we continue on with today's July 4th episode of Locked on Saints. We just spoke a lot about Chris Olave and Jameis Winston. If you feel like Chris Olave's opportunity here in New Orleans is one that could potentially yield him offensive rookie of the year, then Bet Online has just a thing for you right now. Chris Olave, New Orleans State's first overall selection or their, their first selection uh, in this year's draft is uh, plus 900 second place for offensive rookie of the year odds. You also have over under totals for receptions, receiving touchdowns and yards that you can get in on as well. And of course, everything going on around the New Orleans Saints are they favored right now in terms of opening up the season in Atlanta against the Falcons. You can pick them right now as the favorite to finish second in the division, but maybe you want them to win or expect them to win the division. Those are all things that you can get in on. Jameis Winston himself right now, top odds on Bet Online for comeback player of the year. And 
is in the mix when it comes to MVP. So, so much around your New Orleans Saints that you can get in on before the season even begins over at Bet Online. You can follow them and check them out on your mobile device or on your laptop so you can get all of the trends and action. You can find them over at Bet Online where the game starts. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Thank you again for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out Jake Madison, Locked on Pelicans, every Monday through Friday as well. Zion Williamson returning to New Orleans, signing that max contract, coming back to New Orleans to 2027, 2028. You want all the details on the signing, what it means, and just this new, exciting culture around the New Orleans Pelicans that has always had us excited about the New Orleans Saints, you can go and check out Locked on Pelicans wherever you're getting this show, whether it's on a podcast app or on YouTube. Uh, again, I appreciate you very much for being here. It gets to holiday episodes. We're kind of taking it easy a little bit, but we just broke down a lot of numbers when it came to James Winston and Chris Olave to show you why they're going to bring the fireworks. Let's talk a little bit about the feeling, <laughs> the feeling side of all of this, because when you think about what the New Orleans Saints defense has done so extremely well, it has had heart since 2017. That's been one of the big things that has changed about this New Orleans Saints defense that was depleted 2014, 15, and 16. And Dennis Allen was a big part of that. Marcus Williams was a big part of that. Uh, Marshall Lattimore was a big part of that in that 2017 draft class that turned into so much for the New Orleans Saints and now other teams when you consider Trey Hendrickson and Alex Anzalone and Aquadine Muhammad. But you look at where the Saints are now with the addition of Demario Davis, which when you talk about heart, this might be the most inspired defensive unit in the NFL. And then now you've added Marcus May, you've added Tyron Matthew, and in the years past, you've added C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And I think that trio in particular are the guys that are most likely to bring the fireworks in 2022. Think about all the different ways that those three guys can impact the New Orleans Saints. I was actually on Monday's episode of Locked on NFL. Kevin Ostreicher bringing me on to speak a little bit about the uh, medical clearance of Peyton Turner and what it means to the New Orleans Saints. And one of the questions that he asked me was, what is so special about this New Orleans Saints defense when it comes to versatility, versatility, multiplicity? And the four players, there are actually four players that I was really, really quick to highlight. Uh, Marcus May, Tyron Matthew, the new additions, and then guys that know the defense extremely well and fit in in multiple spots like C.J. Garner-Johnson and P.J. Williams. So between the four of them, Marcus May, Tyron Matthew, and Associates, uh, the New Orleans Saints have guys that can impact the defensive side of the game just about anywhere on the field. So Marcus May is somebody that had the highest forced incompletion percentage from 2017 through 2021, um, and number one in that metric. And the number two guy behind that, of course, is Marcus Williams, the guy that the Saints lost this offseason headed to, headed to Baltimore. But he was also asked to play in Robert Sala's defense as a box safety quite a bit. So he has some versatility there, right? He can be your deep safety. He has the range. He can do all those things. He's got great instincts. He's a good ball tracker, all of that stuff. Makes good plays on the ball, good ball skills, all of that. But can also come down, play downhill. He can make some tackles for you. He can be a little bit of an enforcer for you in the middle of the field. Something Marcus Williams like started to do last year, started to do in 2020, but wasn't always a part of his brand, right? Tyron Matthew, name it. Put the guy anywhere. Line him up at three tech if you need to. The guy can do anything. So you have him as somebody that can also play deep downfield, that can also play in the box, that can play up against the line of scrimmage, just like C.J. Garner-Johnson, right? So now you have these two safeties, and you saw this a lot in the New Orleans Saints defense last year, particularly on third downs. Three down linemen, and you had two linebackers on the field that were what uh, Deuce Windham would call sugar in the A-gap, and so they were coming up between the guard and center on either side, right, to kind of stack the line with five. And then on the outside, you had both safeties on either side, Malcolm Jenkins on one, C.J. Garner-Johnson on the other. And then some configuration of those seven guys would blitz or, or rush the passer, and then you know some would drop back. And a lot of times, they would send C.J. Garner-Johnson or Malcolm Jenkins, and in some case, both. You can do that exact same thing with maybe now a better pursuit player in Tyron Matthew over Malcolm Jenkins in 2022's defense where you're going to be able to line up a defensive line of, let's say, Cam Jordan, uh, David Onyemata in the middle, and then let's just say Marcus Davenport or Peyton Turner, right? Carl Granderson, they like to use in those third downs as well. Then you have guys who are super, super good pursuit players from the second level, Demario Davis and Pete Werner coming up the middle, right? Or threatening the middle, let's say. We're talking pre-snap here. And then on the outside, Tyra Matthew on one side, CJ Garner-Johnson on the other. Who's blitzing? Who's rushing? 
who's dropping back into coverage. That's going to be part of what it is that makes the New Orleans Saints defense so unpredictable in 2022. And that brings the fireworks because all of a sudden you're dropping CJ Gardner Johnson back into coverage while the offensive line is expecting to slide that way. Tyron Matthew comes off the side and bam, he's got a clear hit on the blind side of the quarterback. That's some fireworks, right? You send Tyron Ma- or you drop Tyron Matthew back and you drop CJ Gardner Johnson back and the offensive line and the, let's say, running back that's there for the extra protection is so locked in on the fact that there might be some additional edge pressure coming that they lose sight of the guys coming up the middle. Then all of a sudden, you've got very, very good blitzers like Demario Davis, who's had at least three sacks in the last four seasons, and Pete Werner, who is a very good pursuit player at Ohio State and showed that he could do that again for the New Orleans Saints coming right up the middle. And you're twisting these offensive line or these defensive linemen, and you're confusing the offensive line, all that, right? So now you have all these different configurations that you're able to create based on effectively three guys. Marcus May, Tyron Matthew, and C.J. Garner-Johnson. Plus, you have P.J. Williams who can play inside. He can play safety. He can drop back for you. He can be an enforcer over the middle as well. He's done that before. There's a lot that the New Orleans Saints are going to be able to do thanks to the addition of two players in Marcus May and Tyron Matthew. Now, Marcus May is expected to serve some length of a suspension thanks to a DUI arrest about 15 months ago, um, and that should happen in August. We should find out in terms of his, his court appearance. And then soon after that, when he's suspended, it's probably going to be the first three games of the season, more than likely. So who would be the next guy that could potentially step into his role? P.J. Williams can certainly be that guy. So we're still talking about versatility. But Justin Evans is another one to maybe keep an eye out on. He had two really, really complicated injuries that effectively kept him out of the entire league in 2021. He came back to the NFL, came back to the New Orleans Saints. He has a connection with some of the guys that are in the locker room, right? He's got guys like like Jameis Winston, of course. But when you look at, they, they played on the Bucks together years ago. And so when you look at somebody that could potentially step into Marcus May's role as somebody that can be an absolute enforcer, Justin Evans. What about Smoke Monday? You want to talk about bringing fireworks? That dude is the hardest hitting safety in the 2022 draft class, and he wasn't even drafted. And he was expected to be a fifth, fourth, sixth round guy. I mean, he's expected to be a mid-round guy. And then the Saints got him as an undrafted free agent. What if he makes the roster? All of a sudden, you're looking at this New Orleans Saints secondary, these safeties, as the guys that can absolutely bring the fireworks in 2022, and they can do it in many, many different ways. All right, coming up next, we've broken down how one tandem might bring the fireworks when it comes to the big plays. Another tandem could end up bringing the fireworks in terms of the big hits, all of the great things that they can do over on defense. But there's one other way, and I'm talking about bringing the fireworks at the end of a game. Now, I know the New Orleans Saints don't set off fireworks when they win games, but you get what I'm saying. Who are the guys that can win games for the New Orleans Saints? The good news for them is that These aren't guys that are new to the team. These are guys that are returning, that already know the system and should have a huge impact in 2022. We'll break down who they are and wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints with that here in just a moment. First, I want to tell you about our friends over at Rock Auto, your number one source for everything you need for your your car, for all of your auto parts, right? Whether you're rebuilding a classic, whether you just like to do your own repairs, or whether you're just trying to save a little bit of money so that you don't have to pay the ridiculous prices over at your local mechanic, right? That's going to upcharge you for the part. And that's probably going to charge you a ton for the labor as well. If you're already paying a bunch for the labor, you might as well save yourself some money on the parts by just ordering the parts on Rock Auto, bringing the part to them and saying, this is what I need changed. And then paying for just the labor. It also makes it so that when you bring in your car, you actually can get it worked on when you bring it in. After you make an appointment, as opposed to making an appointment, going, getting them to tell you what's wrong, having to pay for that, then having to pay out the ridiculous prices when it comes to the prices, but then you have to wait three days for the, for the part to show up and then wait for the labor to be done. And all that time, you're just sitting there without a car. Now you can order through rock auto, get everything to you quickly, go straight to the mechanic shop with your appointment and actually get your car (laughs) taken care of and get it done. So really, really awesome. Makes things really convenient, time saving, money saving, all of the above and sanity saving as well. So go and check them out. Rock Auto, the number one place for everything you need around your vehicle. Let them know that Locked On sent you right in Locked On in the How'd You Hear About Us section. It's amazing selection, reliable low prices, and all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Let's get it, Huda Nation. Wrapping up today's episode of Locked On Saints. Talking about these guys that can bring the fireworks for the 2022 NFL season for the Saints. It's a July 4th episode. Happy Independence Day to you. So what we're doing here is that we've taken a look now at the offensive guys that can bring the fireworks with the big plays, the defensive guys that can bring the fireworks in just a bunch of different ways. And then now what about the guys that can win you games, right? They bring the fireworks as the fireworks go off in celebration because you got the dub. 
Jameis Winston's absolutely a part of this equation because we're talking about guys that are coming back to the team that are returning, right? Returning to the team because of injury, things like that. So Jameis Winston is absolutely a part of this equation, but we talked about him already. So I'm going to focus on two guys that are returning that are going to win the New Orleans Saints games. The first of which is Michael Thomas. Easy. Um, Pro Football Focus recently wrote out a piece to where they ranked the 32 rosters in the NFL. They talked about every roster's strength, weakness, and X factor. The Saints were ranked just outside the top 10 at 11. I'm not even like really mad about that, if I'm being honest. Like I think that's a really honest spot for them to be, and they could easily move into the top 10. You look at the Philadelphia Eagles, who were in the top 10, swap them out, and I think you're in a good spot there. So for me, the X factor for the for for PFF in that piece was Michael Thomas. And I agree with that, right? I mean, he changes everything for you in terms of the complexion of your expectation of the 2022 NFL season, which means he wins you games, right? Somebody doesn't somebody coming in doesn't just impact how you feel about the season because they can make a couple of catches, because they can get you a couple of first downs, because they might catch a touchdown or two, right? The guys that give you that kind of impact, those are the guys that have the ability to win you games. And so Michael Thomas has the ability to bring the fireworks in 2022 as a guy that can win you. A game. He can be all the difference. I mean, you, you think back to the Teddy Bridgewater uh, versus the Bucks game, right? Where he produced without Drew Brees. He produced with uh, Teddy Bridgewater. He produced with Taysom Hill. And that was in the season, particularly that Teddy Bridgewater season was in the season where he ended up breaking the record, setting the record for most receptions in a season, right? Where he was averaging like nine catches a, a game during that year, over a hundred yards uh, per game as well. And so you look at that huge game that he had against uh, Tampa, to where he had you know over ten catches, over 180 yards, if I remember correctly, two touchdowns. He did all that with Teddy Bridgewater, and that shows you. And not that Teddy Bridgewater is a bad quarterback. Remember, he's number one for me when it comes to vibes only, but <laughs> in our vibes only quarterback ranking. But when it when you look at where Michael Thomas is able to impact a game for you, it just goes to show you, like looking back at 2019 and, and what that team was, which was a very good team. But it was a team that was led by Drew Brees and that Michael Thomas was still able to produce without him. So the Saints had built this vehicle that could that Drew Brees could drive, that Teddy Bridgewater could drive, that Taysom Hill could drive. And they did it again in 2020. So the Michael Thomas effect is one that we've already seen. And again, there's this whole like thing about, oh, he's not going to be back to 2019 standards. That's fine. That's fine. Get him back to his rookie year standards where he was still learning the scheme. He was the least prepared he was ever been. And he was effectively a number two next to or across from Brandon Cooks. And you're okay with that. 92 catches over 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. Like you'll take that, right? Like you're ecstatic about that. So Michael Thomas can bring the fireworks, will bring the fireworks in 2022. And I think a lot of people have just, just conveniently forgotten who Michael Thomas is, but they'll quickly be reminded in 2022 if he gets back out on that field remotely healthy. The second guy, and the final guy that we'll, we'll discuss in today's episode, that brings the fireworks is Will Lutz. Now, it's not about showiness. It's not about getting 180 receiving yards in a game or averaging 35.4 yards per catch or playing in the box and coming off, making a big you know, sack as a safety, all that stuff. It's not about that when it comes to Will Lutz. It's simply that Will Lutz will win you games. And he might not win them in dramatic fashion, right? We've seen games over the course of the 2021 season where the Saints were going between Cody Parkey and Brian Johnson and, and all the, you know, uh, uh, Aldrick Rosas, like all these, all these kickers that they cycled through, four different kickers that they cycled through in 2022 or 2021, excuse me. There were instances in which, yeah, you look at the Atlanta Falcons game, for instance, the missed field goals, you lose that game, right? You make a field goal at the end of that game. And all of a sudden you win. The Tennessee Titans game, there was an immediate impact on the end of that game because you missed the two extra points. And because of that, instead of being tied at the end of that game where you could have been kicking an extra point to win, you instead were trying for two so that you could tie the game, right? And at one point, you even tried for two just because you didn't trust the field goal kicker in the first place. So those are games where you can see the immediate impact in dramatic fashion where Will Lutz wins you a game. But then there are games like the New York Giants game. To where you're up, you're performing extremely well, you've got this great, exciting stuff going on around the home, uh, the home crowd, all of that, and then you miss a field goal, you know, in the press box heading to, you know, the right, which would be what, the, the, the north side of the stadium, I think. And so 
you miss that field goal. And then all of a sudden the momentum just gets sucked out of the building. And then the Giants go on this run, close it out and win the game. That's a moment where you wish you had Will Levis. Even though it's not dramatic fashion at the end of the game, the clock is ticking down. There's two seconds left on the clock. You get the snap off and then he drills a, you know, a a 40 something yard field goal for the win. It might not be dramatic fashion, but he is the difference in that moment of the momentum that leads you to win that game or lose that game. It didn't work out for the Saints in 2021. Those moments should be different in 2022. And Willett has been kicking and he's been looking good. I'm looking forward to tracking him throughout camp. We'll, we'll kind of do like a little Lutz report every day and I'll just go through like what we saw him do, where we saw him kick from, all of that. But I mean, you want to talk about somebody that's going to win you some games, even if it's not the big like fireworks, the big, you know, dramatic fashion at the end of the game, he's still somebody that's going to put you in position week in and week out to not lose games. And the Saints kickers last year put them in position, not only put them in position, but lost the Saints games last year. They were the difference between the New Orleans Saints being nine and eight or 11 and six and not even having to hesitate about a playoff spot, despite the fact that four different quarterbacks started for that team. All right, coming up tomorrow, we're sticking with the excitement theme. That's kind of the theme throughout this week. So bringing the fireworks today, but how excited are you as a fan? I did a poll, started up a poll this morning. It's still open at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter if you want to go and vote about how excited Saints fans are about the 2022 season and why you are excited. And right now, 66% of the 385-ish people that have voted so far uh, are very excited. And so when we break all of this down in tomorrow's episode, I'm going to tell you why I'm excited about the New Orleans Saints of 2022, because I might come from a little bit of a specific perspective here, but I'm also going to share all the different reasons why fans are excited and why you should be excited about the New Orleans Saints in 2022. So we're going to break all of that down in tomorrow's episode, which I'll record later on today. But for now, I appreciate y'all as always making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, go and check out Locked On NFL. You can hear me talk about Peyton Turner on Monday's episode. And of course, Luke and I will have you covered with all the big news and maybe our own you know, holiday themed episode over at Locked On NFL later on today. So a whole bunch coming up for you all around the network. I appreciate you as always making me a part of your day. I will see you tomorrow. Again, if you see me, say hi. But for everything else you need around these episodes on your New Orleans Saints, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.